God bless you. Thank you for joining in with us for our opening hymn this morning uh, throughout the congregation. I see you out there. You some, some people, you got smiles on your face, and that's a good thing when we're in the house of God. Amen. And those behind me, I can feel your smiles. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining in with us, especially those of you who are in the sanctuary today. I want to welcome you to the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church right here in beautiful Auburn, Alabama. And there may be those of you who are uh, joining us online uh, over social media. We welcome you into the house also. Someone of you may be watching us on a delayed basis on our YouTube channel or some other uh, social media outlet. Whatever the situation is, we thank you for joining with us. And we pray that for the next hour or so that we are together, that we will focus our hearts, focus our minds, and especially our spirits on things that are above. We have gathered here for serious business today. We have gathered for the purpose of worshiping and lifting up the name of our Savior, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing to gather for. So God bless you for being with us. Today is the first Sunday of the month, and it's always special on the first Sunday. At the end of the message today, we will be sharing in the Lord's Supper together. So right immediately after the message, please stay with us as we share in the Lord's Supper. When you came in, you could have, should have received a cup that you can use to, uh, for the, for the uh, Lord's Supper time. If you did not receive the communion cup, let, raise your hand, let one of the ushers know, and they'll easily get you one. Amen. So we're looking forward to the time that we can celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Amen. We thank you again for being here with us, whether you're in the house or whether you're watching us over social media. We're going to ask our choir to come back, give us an opening hymn from the choir as we be blessed by them. Come on. Amen. 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 I may know God.
that he will make it all right. I ought to have some witnesses out there, ain't I? I ought to have some witnesses out there that God will make it all right. Have you ever been in a situation that you didn't know how you were going to get out of? You didn't know how you were going to take care of it? You didn't know what you were going to do? But now that you look back, Somebody in the house is old enough, and I'm not the oldest somebody in here, but somebody's old enough to know that, uh, that God can fix it for you. Now, uh, I'm telling you, when I say that, that's not because I heard somebody say it. It's not because I read it in a book. I'm telling you what I know from my own personal experience, that God can make it all right for you. Even when you can't see your way out, when you can't see a reason why, when you're wondering why, Lord, God is very able to make it all right. Amen, somebody. Amen. All to get some witnesses in the house. Amen. Somebody has been to the point where you were just didn't know how you were going to make it. Uh, the, 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 the money is gone, but the month has still got a ways to go. But God brought you through. You've been there. I could talk about that for a while, but I, I just want to let you know from my own personal experience, if you'll give it to God and then wait patiently upon him, the old folks said he may not come exactly when you want him to. Come on, somebody. But he's going to be right on time. Uh, that's an old saying, but it's as true as the day is, is long. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, I want to thank you for being in the house today. I want to welcome those of you who may have just come in or who may have just signed on to social media. Thank you for joining us in this humble place today. We are grateful and spiritually proud to have you in the house this morning. I encourage you to participate in our worship service today. I, 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 I've never been... I, I don't hold anything against anybody, but I don't see in the Bible where it says we're supposed to always be quiet in church. All right. Amen, somebody. You can raise your voice. You can raise your hands. You can shout hallelujah. You can say amen. amen. And nobody in this house ought to look funny at you. If they do, let me know. I'll talk to them and pray for them. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 We're going to ask uh, you to get ready to let us go before the Lord in prayer. We need, uh, we're living in an age right now where I just don't know what news I'll hear tomorrow. Amen. I don't know uh, when there'll be another catastrophe, um, natural disaster, weather, fires. I don't, I don't know when there'll be another man-made catastrophe like mass shootings or Pandemics. I don't know that. But I know the God that is still in control. And even when those things come, even though we don't understand, we can still trust him that he is still in control. Amen. One of the things that we can help to get us through these times that we can't understand and the difficult days that we live in is our prayer life. Y'all have heard me say it before, but I love saying it, so I'm going to say it again since I'm the pastor. I, I got the floor right now. I'm going to say that, that Martin Luther, that 16th century theologian, and I'm paraphrasing here, he said that prayer to the Christian should be as essential as breathing is to the human body. That's some serious statement there. 
we must stay in prayer. You know, Jesus, when he was here on earth, he, you know, he chose the 12 disciples. I, I, this is not my message, but I, I had the Holy Spirit just gave me a passage of scripture to share with you. In, in, in Matthew chapter 5 and again in Luke, Jesus' disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, I'll tell you what's striking about that passage of Scripture. These same disciples had seen Jesus perform miracles. These same disciples had seen Jesus uh, heal the blind, heal the blind. These same disciples had seen Jesus uh, raise others from the dead. They had seen Jesus feed 5,000 men, not even counting the women and the children, with, with a schoolboy's lunch. They had seen Jesus do all of these things, but they never asked Jesus to teach them how to perform miracles. They said, teach us to pray. Amen. Come on, somebody. They, they, never, they never asked Jesus to teach them how to do any of the things that he did except pray. Because they knew that Jesus was a praying man. And they assumed, as we should, because of his prayer life, he was able to do these things. All right. Somebody ought to hear me. I had a pastor some years ago. He had a favorite statement that I, I have adopted from him. He said, little prayer, All right. little power. All right. Much prayer much power. No prayer, no power. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I encourage you. I'm going to ask Brother Lemetrius to come on up and take us to the house of the Lord in prayer. But even after this moment in church today, treasure your prayer life. Treasure your prayer life. It is the source of our strength. Good morning, church family. Good morning. I'm not going to be out of order because Pastor did give me a little time just to speak on my praise report. And I know many of y'all know in 1995, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Jesus. I didn't even tell my mother that when I went to surgery, they gave me a... 40% chance of making surgery. And I told the doctor that God told me that night before by his son's stripes. I didn't hear. So with that being said, I know I promised the, music, the director and minister of music that I was going to be here two weeks ago for choir rehearsal. Unfortunately, that wasn't part of God's plan. I kept this from my mother. I had a lump that was on my backside. And did nobody know what I was going through because I kept it between me and God. All right. Because I can tell people when people can have thoughts in their own and they might respond without even noticing what they are saying. So I kept it between me and God. And I had to go get my blood work. I was terrified. I didn't tell nobody. I went in there, had my head held up. Blood work came back. Everything was all right. Right. Well, I wrote the song that he chose. He'll make everything all right. And on last week, well, last Wednesday, I had to go to the Arbor Pavilion and get another colonoscopy. Right. Still not telling my mother about this lump on my backside. But that night before, I held it because I thought about something Pastor Anderson told me. When you're in pain, touch that spot to pray on it. Or call it all the same. But like I said, I got a prayer life, so I don't need nobody. But I appreciate everybody praying. Because I know how to go to the man myself. So I touched that spot, and I prayed over I woke up that morning, that knot was gone. We went into the Arbor Medical Pavilion. Me and my mother, bless her heart, she was with me going through her stuff. She was with me. And she been with me through it all. <laughs> so got in there. I got the um, test done. They said, oh, we were coming out, and I was trying to get out the bed. And they just laid me back down, so I did not know what was going on. And when I did come back to my sisters from the meds, 
my mother told me that the doctor had released me for two years and that everything was still all right. So it's shout time, it's prayer time, we got to trust God no matter what we face, no matter what we face. And I'm not the one to get up here and speak on that because it still brings back the past. But I got to let that past stay in the past because now God created and made me a new man. So with that being said, I thank Mount Moriah for their prayers. I thank my pastor, my mother, my family. Even people I don't know, I thank for their prayers. And what made it so, made it even better, when I came out from the procedure, I ran into this pastor right here at Circle K. And I didn't even tell him, but that let me know that everything was going to be all right. So with that being said, I thank y'all for giving me a minute. I thank Pastor for allowing me to give my praise report. And with that being said, I don't have to go back to the cancer center for a year, and I don't go back to another closed mouth for for two years. So we're going to continue to give God all of what he gave me. He gave me life, so I'm going to give him my life back to him. And I like I ask y'all, just continue to pray for me because this journey is not easy. I still backslide. I still stumble, but I know how to call him and grab his hand and he pulls me back in his presence. So with that being said, all minds on one accord, I ask you to bow your head and close your eyes as we go to God and pray at this present hour. Oh, most humble and powerful God, we come to you this morning in the name of your son, Jesus. We bow here, close our humble heart, and as grateful and sincere as we know, just telling you thank you. Lord, we just thank you for watching over us as we slept on last night, Lord. We just thank you for preventing demonic spirits from overtaking us. We just thank you for preventing deaf angels to enter our households. But somewhere across your world this morning, Lord, somebody didn't rise. So right now, we ask you to come bereaving families. We ask you to be with the ones who have lost loved ones. And we ask you just to walk with them through their grieving process. But right now, Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to just make it to your place of worship one more time, Lord. Yes, sir. But right now, Lord, we just ask you just to use us on this morning, Lord. We ask you just allow us to decrease and let your Holy Spirit increase in us. Because your presence is here, Father God. And we just need to open up our hearts to you, Father God, and just let this praise and worship out. But right now, Father God, we just thank you for the ones in the congregation. We thank you for the ushers. We thank you for the musicians. We thank you for the choir. We thank you for this man of the house and this woman of the house. And most of all, Lord, we just thank you for you. But right now, Lord, we ask you to bless the ones on their way here. We ask you to protect them for anything that may be blocking them, for preventing them to make it to your church house to get your word. And we just ask you to have mercy right now, Lord. We ask you to continue to sit high, look low. And we just ask you to continue to watch over our children, Lord, as they have went back to school. There's so much evil going on in this world, Lord. But we know who can defeat evil, and that's you, Father God. So we ask you just to continue to guide our younger generation. Lord, we ask you just to continue to guide us older generation as well, because all of us are not mature in your word, but some of us need you more and more, and we don't know how to come to you, Father God. So right now, God, we ask you to allow your son Jesus to intercede on behalf of us. We ask you to allow your son Jesus to work in us, and we just thank you. But right now, Lord, you need it all across the world. There's so much evil going on. It's so much killing, so many criminal acts, and so much flooding and weather situations. Lord. So right now, God, we just ask you to be with the ones that were in the floods all across your world. The ones experiencing wildfires, Lord, and had to evacuate their houses, Lord. We ask you just to bless them and restore them with everything they lost and even more, Father God. But right now, God, we just ask you to continue to bless. Bless only like you can on today, Lord. Not just today, but the rest of this year, the rest of our lives. And we just thank you for everything you are doing, everything you have done, and everything you will continue to do. It's in your son's name, a, the, a name that's sweeter than honey, a name that's more powerful than anything in this world. It's in his name. In Jesus' name that we pray. And all of our children say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Demetrius, for that powerful testimony. The testimony of God's faithfulness and God's power and God's goodness. That praise report. And then the powerful prayer itself. God bless you. 
As I said before, he began the prayer, concentrate on your prayer life. It will make a difference. It will make a difference in your life, personal life, but it will also make the difference, I believe, in the world also. Amen? Amen. Amen. There, 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 there's an old saying that I want to alter just a little bit. Uh, it's true, but I want to add a little to it. You know, there's, the old saying is that prayer changes things. That's true. But I found out that the main thing that prayer changes is me. Amen. Because when I pray, it changes my perspective on things. It changes my outlook on things. It changes my, uh, my personality in the sense that I can't be mad at you while I'm praying for you. I can't still be envious of you while I'm praying for you. I, I can't be hatred of you. I can't display hatred. So continue in your prayer life. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Lemetrius. And we pray that God's hand will rest upon you. Continue to keep your body healed. Stage four cancer to no cancer. Is that God? Is that God? Hallelujah, somebody. That's God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. We want to continue now. We want to, this is the first Sunday, obviously, of the month. And one thing that we do every first Sunday, in addition to our Lord's Supper, we always like to recognize uh, our birthday people of, uh, of the month. And here's our, can y'all believe it's September already? Yes. I'm September already. Huh? Oh, Tommy Dowdell, happy birthday, sir. And Brother Lemetrius, and, and Sister Patricia Smith, Betty, Sister Betty Pons, Miss Osby. Osby. Osby, Sister Osby. <laughs> we got a, we got several birthdays, September birthdays. Well, let's just, huh? And my mother Carrie Bradley. My mother-in-law Carrie Bradley, my bride's mother Carrie Bradley. She's uh, she's watching us right now in California. She watches us every Sunday morning. And Daryl Berry. Oh, yes. oh, amen. We got a whole lot of folk on born on September. God bless each and every one of you. Let's say happy birthday to all of you September people. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> Sister Pat, did you get all those names, Sister Pat? All right. All right, Sister Pat. But y'all don't know, Sister Pat, Pat is our clerk. And she, uh, uh, other than myself, she spends more time here than anybody else. She is a wonderful, thank you, Sister Pat, for your your diligence and your and your hard work. We are so thankful for you to be a part of Mount Moriah. Uh, now, what about anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries in the month of September? Uh -oh. Huh? Sister Karen Carter in the, on, on Facebook. 26th wedding anniversary. All right. Sister Carter, oh, Sharon Carter. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Any other wedding anniversaries in September? I guess that's the only one then. Well, we want to say happy anniversary to Sister Sharon and uh, her uh, husband, and uh, happy birthday to all of you. One more time, happy anniversary, happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're going to carry on now. We're going to ask our choir to come back and give us a, uh, another song. Have you you've already sang? No, you sang one. And uh, no, 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 no. Go ahead. I, I just I lost track for a minute. I, I had a senior moment there for a minute. Y'all laughing, but now you'll have senior moments too. Amen. I'm not the oldest somebody in here now. Amen. 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 We have senior moments. Amen. Yeah, we do. But thank God for the senior moments. Amen. Yeah, there's there some folk didn't get that privilege. Amen. 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 God bless you. Come on, choir. It's Pat's birthday today. Is it Pat's birthday? Is it today? I think, is, that, is, I mean, is this your birthday? This, this tomorrow? tomorrow? Okay. Can you sing it? Let's see. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord.
Bless you. Come on, let's pray. bless God for this choir. Put Sister Pat on the on the spot, and she came through. Flying colors, Amen. Amen. We want to thank our musicians too. Uh, Sister Latoya is on the piano, and uh, Brother Anthony on the drums. Amen. And there, there are others who are serving also. We have our ushers in the rear. We're so thankful for you, Brother Dowdell. Happy birthday again. To, no, is it birthday? Yeah. Hey, amen. Yeah. And our media team also. Yeah. Uh, who's doing a wonderful, wonderful job. There we go. Oh, there you go. Put the focus on them. Amen. Thank you all for, for doing. Amen. Thank you for doing a wonderful job. We, we love you and we appreciate you for what you are. Amen. We want to share just a, uh, a few announcements with you, and then we'll, the choir will come back, share another song, and then we'll share the message that God has laid upon our hearts for the day. Uh, I want to begin by asking each and every one of you to please continue to remain faithful uh, in your giving. Uh, the Bible tells us that God owns uh, the cattle on a thousand hills, and every one of them belong to him. Uh, the, the Bible also says that uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the world and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God, and the, the little bit that we do have, uh, we have uh, on loan from God. In other words, God has given us stewardship over his stuff while we're here. And then he asks us to get back to him, just a few things to get back to him. So I, I want to encourage you. First of all, I want to thank those of you who are faithful and who have remained faithful. And then I want to encourage you to continue to be faithful in your giving. God will, is a God of his word. He will continue to bless you. He will continue to cover it for you. Amen? Amen. If, you, if God has laid it upon your heart and you know who you are, there's, there's an individual. I, I won't call your name. There's one individual who uh, has uh, who's begun supporting this ministry and uh, over, over through the Givelify app that is not a member of this church and this individual has been faithful for the last several weeks of supporting this church, and we are thankful for you. Or you know who you are, and we want to thank you for that. If you would like to support this ministry, there are three ways that you can do that. Obviously, uh, you can go to our, um, if you're not in the sanctuary, you can go to our website. On the home page of our website, you can click on the Givelify app, and you can give electronically. Uh, also, you can give uh, through your mobile phone uh, on the Cash app. The cash tag is uh, MMBC, all caps, 2255. That's our street address. Or you can use the old-fashioned, uh, drop it in the mail, to 2255 Wrights Mill Road here at Auburn, Alabama. Uh, if you're in the sanctuary, you, as you exit the sanctuary, the offering trays are on the rear table. Please put your offering in that tray, your offering or your tithes in that tray. We just want to encourage you to continue to be faithful to God. And it's not because God needs it. It's just because God has asked us to give freely to the support of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. God has asked us to do that. Amen. We also want to remind you of a very, very important event. On October the 1st, uh, we will be 
uh, uh, celebrating and having a wonderful time here on, uh, on September 1st with the, uh, I, I, sometimes I just want to see if y'all are listening to me. <laughs> I do. I, I just want to see if y'all can catch if you did see if you hadn't said anything, I said, they ain't, they're not listening. <laughs> October the 1st at 11 a.m., we are having a, a breast cancer awareness brunch. Now, uh, Sister Vanessa Eccles has kind of taken the reins on that particular uh, event. She has done it in the past, so we have given her the reins on that, and she's done a wonderful job so far. I will encourage you uh, to please uh, go to the church website. You need to sign up for this event, you need, or you can sign up on the back table there. You need to sign up for this event. There are, uh, uh, there's no charge for the, t the tickets are free, but we're, we need to get an accurate head count. So either go to our website, or excuse me, go to the Facebook page, sign up there, uh, or you can go, you can sign up here in the sanctuary. On next Sunday, we'll let Sister Vanessa come back and tell us a little bit more about what we can look forward to, but we are, we, we've got a wonderful, wonderful time planned, and uh, we're excited about that, so please. Uh, check the uh, church uh, Facebook page and, or talk with some of our, our ladies uh, who are planning it, Sister Vanessa. We have a committee that is working. My bride is a part of that committee. Sister Patricia McNeil was a part of that committee. Sister Charlotte Barnes is a part of that committee. Stacy Nelms, Sister Stacy is a part of that committee. Uh, there are a number of people that are working diligently on it. So we, Sister Karen Kale, and I probably mentioned one or two more, but I want to encourage you to please, please be excited about that. That's something we're looking forward to. Amen. Amen. I think that's all of our announcements. I got one more. I know that's it. Okay. Amen. God bless you. We want to uh, ask our choir to come back, bless us with one more song, and then we'll come back and share the word that God has given us for us today. Amen.
pray with me. Father God, we thank you for another preaching opportunity, for the privilege, Lord, of being able to come before your people to expound upon your word. Lord, I am undeserving, so therefore I ask you to move uh, the human flesh, the human mind aside, and let me be guided by your spirit. I may decrease and you may increase. Prepare the hearts, the minds, and especially the spirits of those of us that are here, those that are watching online, those that are watching on a delayed basis. Prepare us, Lord, that the word might fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit as you see fit. Father, I pray for whatever that situation is that I just heard a siren for. Pray, God, that you would minister safety and health there. We thank you now, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 amen and amen. Two things quickly. I want to acknowledge the presence of Minister Danny Hayward. Thank you for being here, sir. Amen. He brought a powerful message to us on last uh, Sunday. And... Uh, He's also a good cook, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I got the privilege of uh, experiencing some uh, Louisiana gumbo. Amen. Amen. If you don't have a, you ever back in town and don't have a place to stay, you come on back by my house. Amen. <laughs> I, I also want to um, add an additional prayer request. Uh, it slipped my mind earlier, but uh, pray for the Williams family, brother. Brother Robert Williams, uh, his wife, uh, Deborah, uh, passed, I think, uh, some couple of days ago. I spoke with him, and I've spoken with other members of the family. I, I need you to keep uh, them in prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, are, they, are the other two mics muted? Two on either side, mute it. Make sure they are. Yeah, mute, mute those two. Okay, amen. All right, so go with me today to the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Remember, we are going to be sharing the Lord's Supper together when we... 2 Samuel. Go to chapter 12. 2 Samuel, I want you to... I want you to uh, I'm gonna give you a minute to get there because I'm going to be going verse by verse today as I like to do uh, in an expository form. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to go there. If you have your mobile device or some electronic device, that's, that's fine too. I just want you to kind of keep up with me. Y'all know that when I preach, I like for you to uh, kind of go along with me. Now, we, if you don't have your mobile device or your phone with you, we do have the uh, verses on this monitor behind me. I'm going to read today from the King James Version uh, of God's Holy Word. 2 Samuel chapter 12, we're going to start reading at verse 15, and we're going to read a rather lengthy passage, so be patient with me. I think it's necessary for us to get a full understanding of what God has for us today. Beginning at verse 15, uh, the King James Version, these words are here written, and Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore sought the Lord for the child. David fasted. He went in and he lay all night on the earth. And the elders of his house arose and they went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he wouldn't hearken unto our voice. How will he then uh, vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw and heard that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child had died. Therefore, David said unto his servants, 
is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. Then David arose from the earth, washed himself, and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou did fast, and ye wept for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou did arise, and you ate bread. And he said to them, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and I wept. For I said to myself, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore shall I fast? What can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you this morning from this subject. Faithfulness in the midst of sorrow. Faithfulness in the midst of sorrow. Some of you may remember um, about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, my, my nephew was killed in a head-on collision automobile accident. Uh, the funeral for this 19-year-old child was held on yesterday, it was a week ago. He was an only child, uh, sophomore in college, good-looking young man bright future ahead. He planned on going into the medical field. But God decided, for whatever God's reason was, that the 19 years that he had lived was as long as he would live. I shared this passage of scripture with his mother. His mother came to me and asked a three-letter word. Why? Why? He was only 19. He, why? I shared this passage of scripture with her, and I taught her on it. I, we spoke about it. We've spoken about it since that time. And in this, and I shared it with her because I believe that in this passage of scripture, the word of God gives us an example on how to deal with grief, how to deal with sorrow. I love talking about David. David, other than Jesus, David is my favorite biblical character to preach about. I say that because other than Jesus, David reminds me more of myself than any other biblical character. Now, I'm not saying that because David was a handsome man. I'm not saying it because <laughs> he was musically talented, because I'm not. That's not the reason I say he reminds me of myself. He reminds me of myself because David had a lot of problems in his life. David encountered a lot of situations that he didn't have an answer for. David was given a title that no other man in Scripture, man or woman in Scripture, had the privilege of wearing. God himself said that David was a man after God's own heart. And even in David's troubles, and even in David's problems, and even, yes, in David's sin, God never revoked that title. He was still a man after God's own heart. And, and I wonder, how, why, why is it, how is it that a man that lived the life that David lived and had the problems that he had and, and had the sin that he had, how could he still qualify to be called a man after God's own heart. I think this passage of scripture gives us a little bit of insight. This is only the tip of the iceberg. I could preach for a month about David and, 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 and the things that he went through and dealt with, but this is only the tip of the iceberg. Let me, somebody knows this story, but let me briefly catch you up here. David is the king of uh, Israel, and, and, and at a time when Israel was at war with the with the Philistines, the Bible says at the beginning of chapter 12 that, uh, that, uh, that David stayed back at the castle while his army was out to, 
fighting the enemy. David should have been on the battlefield, but that, that's another whole sermon there about being where you're supposed to be at the right time, but that, that'll be for another time. Uh, the, the Bible tells us that while David was uh, at the castle, that he, through a series of events, he saw a woman by the name of Bathsheba, another man's wife. Uh, he brought her into the castle and uh, long story made short, the Bible tells us that he uh, slept with her. The Bible tells us that she became pregnant as a result of this adulterous, uh, um, this adulterous meeting. When she found out that she was pregnant, uh, David said uh, he needed to hide it. So David came up with a scheme. He came up with a scheme. He brought her husband Uriah off the battlefield. Y'all heard the story. I'm, I'm not going into all the detail. He brought him off the battlefield, and he, he sent Uriah home to, uh, to uh, spend the night with his wife, hopefully that he would sleep with her, and then the people, everyone would think that the child was Bathsheba's uh, husband. I, I can just see right in the middle of the night uh, when... When, when David sent uh, Uriah into his wife, Uriah refused to go. Uriah slept outside. He said, no, I can't. I, I can see Bathsheba sending a text message to David saying, it ain't working. It ain't, it ain't working. He won't come inside. Uriah refused because... His brothers were still on the field, and he didn't want to betray them. Long story made short, David arranged for Uriah to be killed so that he could hide his sin. When we come to the part of the text that we read today, it reminds us that your sin, even though God may forgive you, your sin has consequences. Our sin has consequences. My sin, your sin has consequences. God spoke to the prophet Nathan and told Nathan, you go tell David and go tell David, I know what he did and, and, and you know what he did. And, and, and the word tells us that, Uriah, that Nathan went to David and told him a little story, a little parable. Y'all know the story. David got all upset when he heard this parable. He said, uh, uh, this man you're talking to me about, this man deserves to die. Uh, as a matter of fact, before we kill him, he's got to pay fourfold, four times the money that he has that was worth the, the little lamb that he took from somebody else. Uh, and then we're going to kill him. And Nathan looked at him and said, my friend, you're the man. You are the man. You are the man that took one man's wife. He only had one wife. And you had wives and concubines galore. And you took one man's wife. And then as a result of that, you had him killed. Now, here, here's the story. The story is that Nathan told David that as a result of his sin, there would be a consequence. There would be a consequence. Nathan told David that the child would surely die. The Bible says in our verse 15 where we started there, he says, and Nathan departed after he had told David about his sin and what would happen, it says that Nathan departed and God struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David and it was very sick. David besought God for the child. David at this point is worried. His only ch his child by this woman is, is, is very, very sick. His child, he, he went to God in prayer. He went to God fasting. He went to God seeking God's relief, seeking God's help. But the child remained sick. Verse 16 tells us that David fasted. He went in and he lay all night on the earth praying that God would spare this child. Verse 17 tells us that the elders of the house, they went to him and they tried to raise him up from the earth and they tried to get him up and, com and comfort him and soothe him. But the Bible says that David would neither eat, he wouldn't speak to them, and neither would he eat bread. Verse 18 tells us that it came to pass after seven days of grieving, after seven days of fasting, after seven days of praying, that the child died. Word says that the servants of David, they feared to tell him. 
Now here's David, he's been grieving this child for seven long days. He's been lying on the ground for seven long days. He hadn't eaten in seven days, praying and fasting and begging God, I mean begging God, to save the life of this child. On the seventh day, the child died anyway. I don't know why God makes some of the decisions that he makes, but I will tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, that God doesn't do anything shooting from the hip. God has a plan for everything. In the book of Jeremiah, he says, I, I know the plans that I have for you. Let me tell you this, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Nothing happens by coincidence. Every part of our lives is planned by God. Now, we don't understand and we won't understand on this earth why God makes some of the thing, plans that he does for our lives, but he's God. He's sovereign. He can do what he wants to, when he wants to, how he wants to. The word says that, that when the child died, the servants looked at each other and said, I'm not going to go in there and tell him. No, you can go tell him. I'm not going to go tell him. He'd been acting this way for seven days, and, and, and the child was only sick. Now, when he hears the child, there ain't no telling what he will do. I ain't going to tell him. You tell him. I'm not going to tell him. Oh, no, I ain't going to tell him. David heard the servants whispering, and he perceived maybe the child died. The word says, when David, verse 19, saw that his servants whispered, he perceived that the child was dead. And he said, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. David is now at the height of sorrow. I've never been there where I had to experience the death of a child. I, I, I shared this with my relatives on last week, the week before, that although I have never been there, I've had sorrow in my life. I've had sorrow from one area of my life to other areas. It, it wasn't to the point where I had lost a child, but you know there's more than one kind of sorrow other than losing a loved one. Amen. You may have sorrow because you lost your job cut off all financial sources that you have. You may be living and dealing with sorrow because your children, they, they, they didn't go the way you raised them. They, they, they turned from a direction that they were brought up in. You, you, you did your best to raise them the best way that you could, but now that they're grown, they've taken a completely different avenue, and, and you don't know what is in their mind. You, you may be in sorrow because of a failed marriage that you invested yourself in 110% and the partner that you were married with, the partner that had promised to live his or her life with you has found a reason to go in another direction. These are pieces of sorrow that we deal with. But how do we remain faithful? How, in, in, in the midst of sorrow, how, how, how can we continue to praise God when it seems that my world has been ripped from beneath me? When it seems like somebody has, has shoved their fist into my chest and literally twisted my heart out and ripped it out of my body? How do I remain faithful there? How, how, what, what can I do? God, what can you tell me? Well, when we get to verse 20, David gives us some insight. This is not the only way, but this is how David handled it. Look at, look at, look at what verse, verse 20 says. What verse 20 and the remaining verses tell us is that the first step, the first step to dealing with sorrow and remaining faithful, in, faithful during our times of sorrow is to accept the reality and give it to God. Right. Stop living in denial. If, if that spouse is gone, let me tell you something. By the way, this is, this is, this is, uh, there's no charge for this. If somebody walks, wants to walk out your life, let them go. If someone tells you they're ready to walk out of your life, let them go. 
I don't care whether it's a friend. I don't care whether it's a husband. I don't care whether it's a next door neighbor. If it's a coworker, if they feel they need to walk out of your life, let them go. We need to accept the reality and then give it over to God. Look at what David did in verse 20. And here's the height, and I'm almost done. Verse 20, it says, then David, he did the first thing. The Bible says he arose. He arose. He got up. He, he was down, but he got up. His head was singing, hanging down, but he got up. The word says, once he found out the child was dead, once he accepted the reality that the child was dead, he got up. He, he, he got up. And, 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 and when he got up is when he started getting better. You know, the story of the prodigal in the New Testament, the Bible says that when he was in that hog pen and he came to himself, he said, I will arise. And I'll go back to my father's house. I will arise. I want to tell whoever may be dealing with grief right now, whoever may be dealing with struggling with sorrow right now, get up. Get up. Rise up above the situation. Rise up. Tell the devil, you may have knocked me down, but you didn't knock me out. This, this situation took me off my feet. This situation caught me unawares. This situation blindsided me, knocked me down for a while, took me out for a while, but I'm going to get up. And you need to tell the devil that no matter what happens in my life, you will not keep me down. I will not stay down. I'm going to get up. Yes, I've struggled, and yes, i got my issues and my problems, but I will not stay down. All right. All right. I won't stay down. I see so many Christians sometimes, they, 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 they don't have the joy of the Lord because of something they're going through in their life, because of some sorrow, because of some loss. And loss is a part of our lives that we're going to have to deal with, beloved. But I want to let you know, get up, get up, get up. Yes. David had lost something close to him, a baby. But when he found out that the child was dead. He said, going to get up. Let me tell you something. Grief, grief can linger. Because when you're dealing with grief, you're dealing with more than just memories. You're dealing with unlived tomorrows. Uh, there's not just sorrow. There's disappointment. And there's anger. Anger lives at sorrow's house. Right. Anger at yourself. Angry at life. All of these are emotions that can develop when you're going through sorrows. And one of the things that the devil wants you to do is to start feeling sorry for yourself. He wants to put you in a pity party because of the great loss or the sorrows you're going through. But I got news for you, beloved. God does not accept invitations to pity parties. Get up. Get up and get out. Say to yourself, I will arise. I will arise. I know that question goes through your mind, why? Why, why did mama have to leave me now? Why, 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 Lord, why? Why her? Why him? Why now? But I want to let you know something. That God is still in control. We can't answer the question. Only God knows the reasons behind his actions. But we can stand on the fact that God is still good. First thing he did was he got up. And then secondly, look at what he says. I'm still in verse 20. And he says he got up and he washed himself. Uh, all right, now he's been laying on the floor for seven days. He, he was probably pretty ripe by now. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's been lying there for seven days, but he was lying there praying and fasting for this child. But he got up, and he washed himself. What did he have on him? What was it that he needed to wash off? He needed to wash off his past. He needed to wash off his fear. He needed to wash off his guilt. 
And let me tell you something about that word guilt. I've been to many a funeral. I've preached many a eulogy. And I'm not talking about nobody in here, but I'm going to tell you what I've noticed. That guilt, I see guilt at funerals an awful lot. Because what I see many times are the ones that's hollering the loudest. Or the ones that are guilty because they didn't do much. They didn't do enough. The ones that are shouting and crying the loudest when mama gone are the same ones that hadn't seen her in six months but lived across town. The, the ones that holler and scream the loudest are the ones that didn't come over and sit with mama when she couldn't walk, didn't take her to the hospital because they didn't have time, didn't take her to the doctor because she had to work that day. But when mama is gone, the guilt comes in. Somebody ought to help me. David got up and he, he washed himself. You see, David had the guilt of taking another man's wife and taking another man's life. David had the guilt of sinning adulterously. David had all of that guilt on him. And I believe that when he got up and when he washed himself, he was washing figuratively that mess off of him. He came to his Seth. That's what the prodigal did. He came to himself. And then finally, I'm still in verse 20. The word says, after he got up, and after he washed himself, he anointed himself. He, he anointed himself. The anointing represents the power of God. God's divine enablement. Let me tell you, when you're down and don't know how you're going to make it, the anointing of God is what brings you through. When you're down and don't see your way out, the anointing of God brings you through. When you're down and you don't know what to say, what to do, you need the anointing of God on you. You need God's favor. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. It don't matter who said this or that or the other. It does not matter if God's anointing is on you. You got victory. Paul said it this way in the book of Romans. He said, I'm convinced that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I'm convinced that, that, that neither, neither sin, nor angels, nor principalities, nor nothing can separate us from the love of God. God, no matter what you say, my friend, is a good God. God is good. Even in the midst of my sorrows, God is good. Amen. Even in the midst when I don't understand what's going on, God is still good. Yeah. David, the word says that David got up from the earth. When you're dealing with sorrow in your life, ask God to help you get up. And when he got up, he washed himself. I need you to ask God to help you wash off the fear and Wash off the guilt and wash away the anger. Right. And then finally, ask God for the anointing of the precious Holy Spirit. Everybody in this house will go through times of sorrow. Right. If you're not in it right now, just keep on breathing for a while. Right. If you're not dealing with sorrow in your life, just keep on see, seeing another sunrise. Because sorrow is going to be a part of all of our lives. Right. Can, can I get some help in the house? Is there anybody here? that knows you've been through some things that you didn't know how you were going to make it and while you were in those things you, you were down and depressed and you were sorrowful but God had a way of bringing you back up and bringing you out God has a way even at this moment to bring you beyond the sorrow that you're going with how do you deal with the grief in your life how do you deal with the losses of your life how do you deal with things when it seems like friends are gone and even those who say that they're related to you when they don't trust you anymore? How do you feel when those things, you got to give it all to God, and to, hallelujah to the Lamb. I want to encourage you today to give it over to God. Yes, grief is reasonable, but at some point you got to stop grieving, my friend. It's all right to grieve for a while. Sometimes you got to grieve for several weeks, even several years. But at some point, you got to get up like David did. At some point, you got to accept the reality that, that God made a decision. And even though I don't understand, even though I may not agree with it, that, that God is still God. And God does not make mistakes. I don't know. 
why bad things sometimes happen to good people. I don't know why little children have to go the way of the grave. I don't know why good people live in sorrow and sadness sometimes. But I do know that we serve a God who's able to bring you through. Do I have a witness in the house? That God is able to bring you through your troubles. Whatever your troubles are today, give it over to God. Whatever your sorrow is today, accept the reality and give it over to God. You may be sitting here today and say, well, Pastor, everything's pretty good in my house. My marriage is doing pretty well, at least as far as I know. The children are making pretty good grades, doing pretty good in school. My job is doing real good, making pretty decent money. The sermon you're preaching today really does not apply to me. I want to tell you something, my friend. Keep on living. Trouble will knock on your door. Keep on living. Trouble will walk up on your front doorstep. Trouble will walk in uninvited. Job said it this way. Man that is born a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. And troubles bring sorrows. Troubles bring grief. If you give it over to God, get up, my friend. Don't walk around with your head hung down. Raise your head. Make the devil think it ain't working. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to have a smile on my face. Yes, hell is going in my house. Everything is going to hell in a handbasket. But I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Yes, I got problems I can't take care of. But I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I serve a living God. He's able to bring me through. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I serve a Jesus. I serve a God whose son is Jesus. Can I tell you about him for just a minute? That he's, uh, he's Matthew's king. That he's Luke's great physician. That he's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. That he's John's word made flesh. That he's James and Jude's older brother. That hallelujah to the Lamb. That he's David's lily of the valley. That Light and morning star. He's Jeremiah's fire. Shut up in his bones. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He is Je uh, Daniel's lion trainer. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Blessed be the Lord. He's Job's horse that was pawing in the valley. He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the room. And most important, he's my Savior. He died, didn't he die? He died, didn't he die? Thursday morning, he got up with all power, all power, wherever it is you're going through. Your sorrow does not exceed his power. Your grief does not undo his love. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. Stay in the church. Stay in prayer. Stay in God. Relationship with him. Stay there. Faithfulness in the midst of sorrow. That's why I think David retained his title. One of the reasons. As a man after God's own heart, he did not let his grief drive him away from God. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. And I'm not talking about anybody. I'm just telling you, I'm, I've been preaching for almost 30 years. But, but I've seen people who lose a loved one and they stop coming to church. They, they don't come to church. They may be mad at God. They may be wondering about God. That, that the sorrow is eating them up. Their grief is eating them up. I said something. I'm going to say it again. 
accept the reality and give it over to God. As long as you hold on to it, it will eat you up. Grieve. That's, that's only right, grieve. The Bible, by the way, the Bible never tells us not to grieve. I, I wish I could spend a time there for a moment. I got, I got book for that. I got Bible for that. The Bible does not tell us not to grieve the loss of our loved one. You know what it does tell us in 1 Thessalonians? He says, don't grieve like those who have no hope. That's, that's what it said now. I, I, I'm coming straight from the word now. It didn't say don't grieve. It says don't grieve like those who have no hope. Because if you don't have any hope, you will let grief take you down. You will let grief hold you down. You will let grief annihilate you. So Paul said, go ahead and grieve, but don't grieve like you have no hope. I could stay there for a while, but I've already gone longer than I planned to today. Pray with me, Father God. Lord, there may be someone who is struggling with sorrow right now. The loss of a loved one. The loss of the financial support. The loss of a child. The loss of friends. The loss of a job. Sorrow has creeped into their lives and the enemy is using that point of sorrow to, to hold them down. Lord, release them now. I ask in the name of Jesus. Release them, Lord. Let them know as David did that you can get up. You can wash yourself. And you can be anointed with the power of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If there's one who does not know your Savior, Lord, I pray that you would draw them. Maybe somebody watching us online right now, Lord, watching us on a delayed basis, they, they don't know what to do with their lives. They're struggling, struggling, especially with grief and sorrow. Move on them, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There may be someone who's looking for a church home. We invite you to come and be a part of this church. We are a good church. We're not a great, we're not, we're not a perfect church, but we are a good church. You may be watching us online and you don't have a church family. You'd like to just have us pray for you. Please go to our website, mountmariahauburn.com. On the front homepage of that website, you'll see an area for prayer requests. Those prayer requests come directly to my inbox. There's an individual, and I won't call your name, there's an individual who I do not know that sent me an email to that box just this past week. I want you to know that I'm praying for you. You told me a little bit about your situation. But I'm praying for you. There may be others who just want to pray reach out to us reach out to us you can do so through our website or you can just if you're here and don't want to come forward today just call the pastor I'm, I, it's not that I'm perfect by any standard but I do know how to pray I, I'm, I know how to pray We want to share the Lord's Supper together. I hope that you got one of the cups when you came in. If you're at home with us, the Word of God says that Jesus broke bread with them and he, they shared together in the fruit of the vine. The disciples have been instructed by Jesus that uh, 
they had been instructed by Jesus. That he wanted to have one last supper with them. One last, before his crucifixion, before his arrest, a mock trial and then his crucifixion. They didn't really understand what was going on, but Jesus said, now, I want y'all to pay attention. This is, something I, this is something I want you to do over and over and over again. One of the uh, one of the things I want you to remember to do. He says, as a matter of fact, as often as you do it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Jesus was speaking of his crucifixion, his broken body, his shed blood. They didn't understand. But we have the privilege now of looking back and knowing that he was giving them not just something for them, but for something for us also. As we look back toward what Jesus did, but we look ahead to his future coming. The Bible says he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. He said, eat this. This represents my body, which is broken for you. Then, and they still didn't understand. I bet you they looked at each other like, what in the world? What's he talking about? Jesus took the cup that had the fruit of the vine. He said, this represents my blood, which is shed for you. This is the blood of the New Testament. As often as you drink it, you do so in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And we have the privilege now. We have the privilege of looking back on his great work. God bless you. I hope that a word has been said, a prayer has been prayed, a song has been sung that has blessed you today. I thank you for those who are visitors at our house. If you're in the sanctuary, thank you for coming and being a part of Mount Moriah. We love you. We thank you. If you're watching this online, thank you for joining us on this day. Amen. 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 Love y'all. Thank you very, very much for coming out and being with us today. Let's stand. Bless you. Bye.